Hi and welcome to this video where I'm going to discuss Countdown which is the second study on the Grade 4 cello exam by Trinity. So this is marked Allegro Vivo. I play it at crotchet equals 80 which is jolly fast. So it talks about mixed articulation and bowing styles. Those are the main things that uh, it really uh, deals with. Uh, so uh, at the very beginning, I like doing a little accent on those notes. Um, just in the very, very first bar, just little accents like this. So, like that, that sort of thing. Rather than, which just sounds a little bit flat, doesn't it? So what is the vibe in this piece? To me, it reminds me of one of those old black and white caper movies, you know, where there's a, a bank heist and uh, you know someone like Charlie Chaplin is in it, and there's lots of rushing around and um, and madcap schemes going on. Uh, it's a bit crazy this piece. Um, it looks very frightening. It looks scary whenever you look at it. It looks very black. Uh, but don't let that put you off. Um, lots of my students get a bit frightened, and they they say, "Oh no, I'm going to do the scales after all." But but I would encourage you to stick with this. It's like anything, once you analyze it, you break it down, you actually realize, you know, this is completely possible. So um, the one word that comes to mind is chromatic. Mm, chromatic. So a lot of this piece is very um, characterized by chromaticism. That's your big word for the day. So um, it just means that each of the notes are right beside each other. Listen to this G, G flat, F. E natural, E flat, D, D flat, C. Do you see what I mean? So that's just a, a, a descending chromatic G scale. Like that. Except not that rhythm. But those are the notes. Um, so watch out for that. Um, so shifting back. Uh, so what I do is I do little cheeky guide notes. So whenever I go from the second to the third notes, so when I go to here, do you know that tune? Is that um, Carmen Bizet, isn't it? So uh, anyway, so that's that was a little side. So getting back to the subject, to get to here, what I do is I go from the one and I put a cheeky little guy note and then I flip four to the three. So but we don't want to hear that, but you do put it in. And you flip four to that toes. And eventually what you do is you make your bow go, f um, you make the shift faster and you make your bow go lighter. And then you don't hear it. So if you haven't used those ideas, I would recommend them. Um, I was really blown away whenever I learned that technique of guide notes. So well, that's a hard note. See the third note? Uh, it's not a funny note. So that's a tough note to find. So yeah, it's a tough one. I mean, what you could do is fingers there on the other string and then just go up three put your one there and then you go one to three you do that uh, um, and then uh, again another guy note to get to there Yes, what speed will it be? So, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be uh, not a. Uh, again, think of the articulation. Mm, play it nice and short. Uh, make it nice and biting. Uh, not a. Uh, like that. Um, okay, and then you've got, a, you've got a really exciting chord. Uh, there, like that. At the end of bar two. So. And it's got a squiggly line all the way down, so it means that they want you to spread the chord. So, so what I do is uh, I like. 
playing them in succession and the G then the D and then the D and the G together and I do a big whooshy thing so like that which makes it very exciting so now I bar three oh this is tricky yeah so uh, so this is where the bowing styles comes in so you get two down bows and another down bow and then four up bows uh, that's it's not every day you see something like that. So, to, so what you have to do is, uh, they're all, the, the two crutches are marked with lines, so they're quite long, so stop your bone between each one uh, a little bit. If I speed that up, so it's not a lot, is it? A little bit. And then then four, then you drop your bow onto the D string. Uh, so, so what you do in slow motion, they're all marked staccato, so press in, give a little bite, and then release on E1, bite and then release and then bite and then release, like that. What you don't do is this. It makes you sound just you, you're a beginner cellist. In fact, I've heard better beginner cellists than that. Because to get a nice tone, you need to release your bow, right? like that. Not like that. So be careful. Don't say I didn't warn you. And that should hopefully bring you to the heel. I like that bar. That's good fun, that bar. So a big extension. Like that, that, but there. Big extension. There. And then while you're playing the open string, you go in slow motion and you move your hand up to the C sharp. So you see that? Well, I'm using the open string and then move my hand in slow motion. See what I mean? And that takes me to there. So we're always thinking ahead. And then what I'm doing, what am I doing? I'm thinking ahead with my elbow or my wrist. We're going to go up to the harmonic. So I do a little circle. So to go up, I do a little circle back the way. And then that takes me up almost magically to the hop top harmonic. There, so look at that in slow motion. Slow motion. Look at the rest. Slow motion. And then while you're playing that harmonic, such a cool note. You, again, it will hold for a millisecond. If you hit it right in the center of the note, then you move your hand back. Did you hear that? I'm still going. Isn't that good? And then you move it back. It's a little phenomena about the cello. Back to the G in fourth position. So it's up to speed. So uh, I love hitting, I love sliding up to that. See what I mean? Going quite fast with fast velocity up to that A. It's like a, 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 a ray of light going through a stained glass window. That harmonic there. And then if you're going back a cheeky semitone, that's my fingering. It's not marked in the part, you can do whatever you want. Four, four, extension back to a one, open, three. So you can rewind uh, the, the video and go over that. And I like doing this, look at this. Uh, you can do that, I love that feeling. So what you do is you hit it, you tap. You don't need to do this, but it's a really nice feeling. So you can actually just do it with your left hand. Hammer, 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 pull off. Pull. You're hammering and pulling off. Like that, it's really cool. Like that, which is really, really nice. So I'll do that bar again. So, so I um, use a really cool idea called I'm the coin game or the smarty game. So I put four coins down and the, I choose something I've got to practice and then I try and get it right four times in a row. So that would be, so what you do is, um, you uh, play it four times in a row, and, but if you make a mistake, and every time you get it right, you keep a coin, but if you make a mistake at any stage, you've got to put all the coins back and start back to the beginning. So I would definitely do that bar every day until you get it, so. Back to the beginning because that was rubbish. I messed it up. I'll have to go back to first time. Oh, 
this pressure are we gonna get up? Ah, we don't wanna mess this up. Whew. And then I get to keep the coins. So, or if you're doing the Smarty game, you get to keep the Smarties. So, uh, what about bar five? Well, oh, this is a fun bar too. So, um, watch out for the bowing. In the, on the first beat and the fourth beat, there are slurs, which is different to the, the, art, the uh, bowing of the second and third beats. So remember, this is about bowing styles. So go. Oh, look down. These are split up, these are split up, and this is all in one bow. Doesn't that sound really weird, that bar? For a year, for not for years, but for a long time, I used to think that the, the, um, the penultimate note in that bar was a B flat. Because it sounded better. What do you hear this? What do you think sounds better? I think that sounds better, but what they want is uh, I don't know, maybe it's just a matter of taste, but it is actually a B natural, so watch out. Why is it a B natural? Because look at the fourth note in bar five. Mmm, yes. Do a Sherlock Holmes, it's a B natural, you guessed it. So that means that the, the note, um, the penultimate note in that bar is a B natural. Don't say I didn't warn you. So also notice there's a crescendo in that bar. And then it suddenly drops down. Subito piano in bar six. So this bar six is a tricksy one. So you start up piano. Wow, so you got a glissando. I maybe hammed it up a little bit. It will put a little bit of cheese on. In fact, a lot of cheese. It was very cheesy, that bit, but uh, it's about like doing your driving test. You know, you've got to look at the mirror and you've got to make it really, really obvious to the examiner that you're, you've you looked in the mirror three times. Oh, sorry, the mirror's there. Look one and like this, and you don't move off until you, you're sure that you've made it clear to the examiner that you've looked in the mirror. Do you know what I mean? Or else you'll fail, man. So you've got to make it clear to the examiner that you have noticed that glissando actually marked in the piece, so I would do it big time. So that's a tricky bar. In the second beat, you you go up into third position. And do that loads of times with the smarty game. Now this, third little extension. Back into third, first position. Flashy. You could do a little bit of vibrato, but my temptation is to go like, like that. But there's a diminuendo. Mm, yes. And then see my eyebrows go up there. That's a really good trick. Whenever you play quietly, you move your eyebrows up. If you want to play like, quietly. Encourage yourself to do that if you want to be loud at the beginning. Like that at the very beginning, forte. Try doing that with your eyebrows. Try moving your jarls. Have very wobbly jarls. Practice that every day. Like that. Jar Jar Binks in um, Star Wars. Try and do that. So the Or the Gungan King. That's who it is. The Gungan King. He has very good jarls. So uh, so that's a tough bar, that one. So again, use the Smarty game for that bar. Bar seven. Uh, so, uh, um, I'm gonna make a crescendo. So last note, the last uh, last note is again um, a chord. So what I do is I do separate, separate, and then I hold the D and the B flat together, and I do a big whoosh up into the air like that in a triumphant manner. It's very dramatic, this piece. I should have said that in the beginning. It's very dramatic. So um, I hope you find that whirlwind blast through the piece um, helpful. So uh, if you did, uh, please subscribe and give my channel a like. And jellio!